Welcome to Is This A Podcast episode number five. Um, oh my god, so much to fill you guys in on. Uh, so, I am recording this on the 19th of May 2020. The time is currently, well, it's 14.53, so let's just call it 10 to 3. And, uh, yeah, you join us. We are still in a uh, United Kingdom lockdown. Um, the lockdown is kind of still a big thing around the world. And, um, yeah, we're trying to make the most of it, but... I think we're kind of suffering in the way that um, the rest of the world is. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, we, I think as a nation, are bored of the lockdown. We do kind of want life to go back to normal. But obviously the majority of us do understand that uh, the coming out of the lockdown process is something that has to take a while. Um, You know, as far as I can say, um, our numbers are going down. And hopefully over the next couple of months we're going to see life returning a little bit more to normal. Um, I mean, some of the restrictions have been lifted already, like we can have now uh, unlimited exercise. We can meet up with friends and family, but obviously we we are to keep our distance and, you know, you're not to go into someone's house um, and just that kind of thing. Um, But there's a huge debate at the minute because the government, um, well, our Prime Minister, put a video out um, which went out to it as a, like a national broadcast type thing, <coughs> and in that he said that um, come to around June the first, and um, w- w- th- like the government are going to look at the figures and talk about can schools go back? You know whether it be you know maybe half a class in the morning the other half in the afternoon something like that you know so they can keep a distance or something i don't know they, there's there's different options but they said we will talk about it around about june the first and if the figures aren't sort of going the way that we want them to then we're not it, it, it's not happening like as long as the figures are going the way that we want them to which is obviously going down then yeah we'll do it but you know there's a there is a criteria um to meet so uh, as of apparently 11 minutes ago nhs england has announced 174 more deaths now <coughs> a, a big kind of debate about this has opened up as well because over the past couple of months when it's come to reporting uh, how many deaths there have been because of the COVID-19 so Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have included deaths outside of hospitals whereas England hasn't and it's only been the past well, I think it's the past couple of weeks now that we've actually been including them I am of the opinion we should have always included them and I say that because like, as I'm sat here um, at my desk recording this literally a 30 second walk away from where I live there was a COVID death at home not in my home but yeah um, it was I remember it was on a Sunday evening and there was um, six uh, staff from these private ambulances which you know when you when you've gone through uh, the loss of someone you know what a private ambulance is for it's for transporting the bodies there was three private ambulances six staff from then uh, the police were called in um, still not really too sure why I think it was as they were bringing the body out just to keep that area clear from people um, although it, it did become like a street wide th- wide thing because like the people at the bottom of the street were going well why is all this happening up there and um, the police actually went down to the bottom of the street and said to people you need to go in um, 
and then I think as they were getting ready for bringing the body out, the fire brigade turned up, and they got into the breathing apparatus, you know, all the oxygen tanks and everything like that, and that is um, kind of what happened. It, it's it's a scary thing to watch, um, but. I mean, without it sounding like a, a joke, because it isn't, but it does kind of bring it home that this, this virus is all over the place. You know, for so long, our government has just focused on the statistics from hospitals, and it's kind of ignored the deaths of potentially thousands of people. Um, testing has been another massive issue over here, because um, we haven't we haven't been able to get the tests our government is saying oh well, we're aiming for 100,000 tests a day and it's like okay that's that's great let us know when <laughs> you know they set themselves these targets and they keep missing them um, and I do understand the government is at a level at the minute where it is facing an unprecedented situation I fully respect that and while they are not popular I do understand the government's reasoning for doing certain things, whether I like it or not. Um, and, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe not so much Boris Johnson, because he obviously he contracted um, coronavirus itself, and so he wasn't in power for quite a few weeks. But the government as a whole has been kind of firm and said, no, we need to do this, and we need to do that. And... Th this is how it's going to be um, it kind of got announced recently as well that the United Kingdom is the second worst um, nation for deaths in the world because of this now at the start when COVID-19 first started coming over here and um, certain people were placed into quarantine um, and then that stopped for some reason I don't really know why um, and the government had this idea of uh, a herd, humi uh, herd humidity no it's not that it's herd immunity and I can't really go into the ins and outs of it because I still don't fully understand the reasoning behind that um, I personally think we should have gone into lockdown straight away. I think the lockdown should have been firmer than what it was. Um, because there was a lot of people that just ignored what the rules were. And just, I don't know, it, it's like for some people life just carried on as normal. And it shouldn't have done. Um, and, you know, them, them two things the herd immunity and uh, people just sort of ignoring the lockdown when it did come in absolutely contributed to more deaths absolutely did because you could follow a sort of pattern with it that you know there'd be a nice weekend for weather and you know people like you know you the listener me at home <clears throat> the furthest I would go is in the garden. I actually managed to sit in the garden for half an hour and then I got too hot and bored. So I came back in. But that's not the point. Um, but, yeah, people went out to parks and stuff like that. And then over the next couple of weeks, you'd see the number of cases rising. And you're like, will you just stay home? So as it stands at the minute, we can have unlimited exercise. You can go and meet your family, um, but obviously keep a distance. You can go and sit in a park um, and, uh, yeah, you can you can kind of go shopping, but you, you are going to have to keep your distance. Some more businesses are allowed to open. Um, so things like uh, B&Q, which is a DIY chain of stores and I can't I can't think of anything else but yeah th like you know other types of businesses are allowed to open that and then the next stage of the lockdown which hopefully you know if the numbers keep going down then um, then the next stage will be that more businesses can open 
like most shops would be able to open um and then in july hopefully like i said if the figures keep going down that's when uh, like restaurants can open cinemas can open theme parks can open and that sort of thing now <clears throat> uh, for the past month the restrictions have been sort of lowered a little bit and the numbers are going down uh, whether it's to what the government wants it to be at I don't know this is going to be reviewed by them like they said around about the 1st of June and um, hopefully you know we will see the restrictions getting lifted a little bit more in June at some point but I kind of think that you know things like holiday parks theme parks cinemas and that sort of thing i don't think they're going to see a summer season at all i think it's going to be delayed a little bit longer um certainly for this year things like um gay pride uh, those events have, have new enough all been cancelled so far music festivals i know uh, big ones like uh, cream festival which is like a dance music festival that's being cancelled um i think there's one is it called return to the 80s or something like that they have all like the old bands and music and everything like that that got cancelled that one um virtual and um yeah that was fun i also did a little virtual thing as well which um maybe not a lot of people know about i don't because i can't really remember without listening to the whole of the last podcast where i kind of got up to with things but i actually did a little bit of fundraising at home and i managed to raise 155 pounds to shave my hair and the money went to a charity called the sue rider charity so the total from that was 155 pounds got raised and um all the donations went straight to the charity anyway so yeah uh, it was good going on my part anyway we've looked at that part of the news um <clears throat> so um it, the other news uh, live news coming in at the minute is saying that china is accusing the us of a smear campaign over donald trump's remarks um pardon me so uh, a summary of other news that's going on donald trump has renewed his attacks on the world health organization calling it a puppet of china mm -hmm. i mean he's he's very interesting isn't he donald trump because he kind of just says what is on his brain but what is on his brain often makes no sense and is actually a danger to people's lives um but i think that's what people want in politics these days they want someone who will speak their mind preferably maybe a little bit more clever i don't know but you know we'll see uh, and then yeah china has accused the us of attempting to distract from its own mishandling of the crisis the attack came after the world health organization said that an independent review would happen as soon as possible the united states uh, which is the World Health Organization's biggest donor, has already suspended its funding of the group. The number of people claiming unemployment benefit in the UK has soared last month, rising by 856,500 people. Um, to, so it now stands at 2.097 million people claiming. And <clears throat> do you know what? I'm not surprised by that news about the unemployment benefits people have been out of work that is what the benefit system is for so kind of why that's news i don't really know um because for quite a while now there has been um i mean and i mean literally years now there has been a campaign against uh the disabled and the unemployed um where basically people blamed them for the recession and um for our government bringing in um uh austerity measures and that sort of thing so yeah the uh work and pension secretary has told the bbc that britain can cope with the unemployment surge well of course it can cope we have this system as a fallback system it's what happens when there is a pandemic and people go out of work they will claim out of work benefits that's how it goes 
so yeah of course it can cope <laughs> I mean okay the way that the system has been sort of mishandled over years we are going to see a rise in uh, destitution and um, certainly cases of people being too poor to live is going to rise up of course um, because our benefit system pays literally nothing to people but hey that's uh, also the government's figures can look better uh, Donald Trump has said he is taking the unproven virus drug <laughs> hydro hydro it's not got a T in the end hydro I don't know how you say it but he's taking something and do you know what good luck to him because I kind of like I kind of I, I don't wish ill health on him but I kind of I kind of do because um I kind of want it to be seen that you know he is this rumor going around on social media saying oh look at this it's a miracle drug and I want someone in massive power to take it and for it to go disastrously wrong so people start realizing hmm maybe everything on social media isn't true but you know you can't just say I wish we're ill on people uh, France and Germany have both proposed 500 billion euros recovery fund for EU countries isn't it amazing how all of this money just randomly appears no no I think that's weird like mm, where was this money before you know you've got Greece uh, which is a part of the EU um, which uh, I think what was it now about two years ago three years ago was going through well basically facing the country going bankrupt and the EU said oh blah, 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 we'll come along with austerity and it's like well okay but obviously you've got money there that you could have just bailed the country out that you claim to help but anyway police and protesters have clashed in Chilean capital uh, Santiago which has been in lockdown now oh god when was it now i think it was the weekend just gone so we're on what are we on today we're on tuesday today so when would it have been let me have a little look so saturday the 16th over here i think it was or it might have been the sunday can't remember which one uh there was actually protests in the united kingdom yes the UK unfortunately fell into the trap of well yeah doing the protests at the lockdown uh, interestingly enough though it was uh, discovered through uh, Twitter and our God and saviour the internet that uh, the protests actually over here in the UK were organised by um, who a, a woman who used to be the deputy leader of Britain First, which is a far-right group um, that believe that basically all brown people are Muslims and all Muslims are terrorists, and anything to do with them um, is evil and you're going to go to hell and we should have them out of the country. Now, as you and me, as sensible people know, not all brown people are Muslims we know that and we know that like not all Muslims are terrorists in fact I would actually go as far to say as no Muslim is a terrorist you know these are people that get brainwashed and then trained and thrown out to literally blow themselves up um, so yeah I don't I don't agree with the far right here in the UK um, but yeah that's the people who were behind the and they've actually set it up it's a limited company um and their idea was to protest um the lockdown now in other parts of the world where i've seen protests at the lockdown you have to understand that those people are fed you know constant fake news false media we aren't in the uk you know i yes yeah, social media the internet is full of bullshit about this especially YouTube I am gonna point that out and I will come on to that in a minute but 
we have quite a reliable um, source for media over here. Um, there are those that, you know, you like, oh, don't read that newspaper, it's always full of lies, but the majority of it is okay. So I didn't really understand why <laughs> we, why the people were protesting over here. As it turns out, there wasn't that many people involved in the protests. None of them kept the distance. And I do hope that each and every one of them gets COVID-19. But then again, I also want the country to return back to normal. It's a bit of a conflict of interest there. Yeah, and uh, the reason I say about YouTube, um, and I, I actually do single YouTube out as a website, which has just given such a, a surge of power to this false news, this fake news, is because I've seen people being affected by this. Now, I've got a friend who, if he ever listens to this, he will know who he is, but he's buying into this. He's buying into the, he's buying into the, 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 the train of thought that actually the lockdown isn't to do with trying to stop COVID-19 spreading. It's actually a government conspiracy theory. It's not a real thing and they just want to lock you down and they're going to take away all your rights and that's it. And he's buying into that. And his main source is videos on YouTube. Yeah. There are people going onto this website, uploading videos and saying it's fake news. Blah, 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 blah. And when you try and reason with these people, because obviously, you know, he's got friends on his Facebook and they all believe in the same thing. So I put a thing on and I'm like, look, the, the logical way of thinking about this is the lockdown has come into place because too many people were getting infected. If we want that number to come down, people have to stay at home. Staying at home has brought the figures down. It's already doing that. The response that I got was I shouldn't believe facts and figures. And the reason I'm giving you that moment of silence is because I want your brain to catch up with that. When you get to a point where the truth, where facts and figures are no longer applicable to your mentality, you've got issues you've got issues and the thing is i don't mind there being conspiracy theories uploaded to youtube i'm not against that at all it's an alternative way of thinking fine but when it comes to this this is a pandemic false news and lies during this time are killing people and th there's no two ways about it you don't believe that coronavirus is a, a thing fine don't believe it but stay the fuck at home. You know? You, you don't have to get infected in order to pass this on to other people. The majority of us in the UK, we want to be safe. So even if you don't believe it, go along with it. I, I am, do you know what? I am really angry that YouTube has kind of just been like, oh, well, our staff are working from home and uh, we can't, you know, really do much at the minute. Piss off. YouTube can do whatever the fuck they want. If they wanted to, they can bring in a system where they actually have to approve each and every single video uploaded. If they wanted to do that. Sure, it's going to slow things down. Sure, people are going to moan about it. But do you know what? it stops fake news so there, if, if this has to come in if videos have to be submitted to then be uploaded do it because you're going to save people's lives but no youtube and google are far too focused on making money trying to make oh, these bloody advertisers happy that they will allow fake news to go on and and to be spread and it's absolutely shameful of YouTube. It really, really is. But there you go. Um, 
And then to finish off on the news a little bit, uh, there have been now 4.8 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 globally with 320,000 deaths. So overall, I mean, I know that there are a lot of confirmed cases, but, you know, we, we, we look back on pandemics in the past and how many millions of people died as a result of them and it's possible that you know maybe we're not going to get up to millions of deaths which would be better than obviously uh, millions more dying um, and a, a kind of good little bit of news to finish off the news catch up um, on that bit because it's just popped up onto my screen a nurse in the United Kingdom has left intensive care after spending more than 45 days there with COVID-19. <coughs> Felix Kaur, uh, who's been treated at Southend University Hospital in Essex, where he's worked for 15 years, gave a thumbs up as he was moved out and thanked those who've uh, helped to save his life. The hospital said colleagues lined the main corridor where there was applause and cheers and a few tears as Mr. Cole was moved to a ward. He since said, I am incredibly grateful to the hospital staff who have helped keep me fighting and for the huge love and support from colleagues and friends. He then added, there will be, uh, there is still a long road ahead for me, but this has meant so much. Um, and yeah, that is a little bit of good news. You know, the majority of people that actually get COVID-19 do go on to recover from it, which is absolutely brilliant. It is what we want. Um, but f when the nurses and the paramedics and the key essential workers, you know, social workers, um, carers, all these sorts of people, when, when they start getting it, you've got a problem. And, um, yeah, I'm, ju I'm just glad that this, this nurse has, um, uh, yeah, I'm just glad that this nurse is a success story and that um yeah sorry i was reading another thing here that's popped up care homes won't be forced to take back covid patients no care home should be forced to take back recovering coronavirus patients if they do not feel they can provide appropriate care downing street has said good that's good i'm i'm kind of glad about that so uh right okay moving on uh, so in episode four, I had told about the day that we had exploring, um, going around San Francisco and we had the, the hop on, hop off bus. Yeah. You remember that one? So, um, yeah, we ended that day quite well. <laughs> now, the next day of our holiday we it was actually going to be our first one where we we kind of had the whole day planned for us um i mean one of the things that we had done before we actually went was to go on the internet um me and my mum and we sort of went through things and my mum was like oh look at this there's a day tour and it'll take you here it'll take you there and then it'll take you to alcatraz so i'm like what really she went yeah you know we'll book that so I'm like, oh wow, okay, that'd be really good. So we'd booked this uh, day tour thing, and obviously you just get told where your meeting point is and all that sort of thing. And you've kind of got to figure it out while you're over there. And although San Francisco is a city that is technology forward to basically the rest of the West, it doesn't have free Wi-Fi, which is really annoying. Um, not across the city anyway so uh, there was a little bit of guesswork and big headedness on my part because I was like right I know where it is it's fine go this way and everyone's like are you sure and in the back of my mind I'm going I fucking hope so um, but anyway yes so uh, we got up early we went and had breakfast early got ourselves ready and uh, we were at the meeting point for the right time sorry if in the background you can hear the ice cream van that's just gone past it's quite a nice day over here it's cloudy but it is quite warm out so i guess it's fine for um the ice cream van to be out anyway um 
yes yeah, so we get down to our meeting point um and we get on our bus and th- th- there is like i don't even think there was 20 people on our bus and it's a full-size coach and you start off you get your introduction um and you get told your sort of itinerary for the day and our itinerary was to go to Muir Woods, come back through Sausalito, and then uh, we would be dropped off at the docks. Our tickets are already ordered and paid for and everything to go on the boat over to Alcatraz Island, and we can go and do the audio tour and everything like that. And we're like, okay, that's fine. So, Muir Woods, it takes you over the Golden Gate Bridge, which was our second time crossing it. Um, still a magnificent structure. And as you're going across it, you on any tour bus, you're obviously told about it. And there are some quite, quite fascinating facts. You know, when they say, like, this bridge is designed to move up to... I, th- I think it's up to 6 or 12 foot, something like that. And it's something to do with the wind and the... the I don't know. But it was amazing anyway. Um little side note here um and we didn't really get to experience this much more until the day after but san francisco does not have smooth roads <laughs> i'm just gonna say that right now okay it doesn't for most part i mean like especially going on to and coming off the golden gate bridge there is a massive bump and it's like unless you're expecting it it's kind of a little bit frightening you're like oh shit am i gonna be on this thing like while it goes down like this is not good um but yeah anyway so you go up um to your woods and you get to see some amazing views and the way that we were traveling you had to go down this hill and you go through i don't know what you'd call it like a little village and it's only a couple of houses there but our tour guide was explaining to us that um, the postal service in America didn't recognize it as a township so the people there is like there's like a drop-off point for mail and if you want your post you have to go to that pickup point and get it kind of annoying um, our tour guide I think her name was Tian Tiani oh my god she was the perfect tour guide that you could ever ask for and i am going to try and um find through my mum the name of the tour company because i i still all these months later i feel like i should write in and just say listen you either have or had this member of staff she's amazing like get her to train your others um she was cracking jokes she had a really good sense of humor um and she just put everyone at ease you know, like even there was people who obviously you know you're coming down the side of a hill um on a huge bus um and there were people that had said look we are quite nervous about about this and she just put them at ease she was really really good with them and um yeah anyway so we're going along and as we get closer she says um i do need to let you know that we might be slightly delayed getting into here because um this this particular road that we're going on and as we go into muir woods you're going to find wild animals so we might find deer you might find what else was there it was deer something and turkeys and she said that if it's like turkeys especially she was going to stop the bus and wait because wild turkeys i think did she say it was the males particularly they will attack a bus if they feel it's a threat yeah that's that's the um that's the mentality of turkeys anyway <laughs> um yeah so um we actually did see a group of turkeys so we did stop but they kind of crossed the road and then went off she did say to us look if if you come across wild animals don't go near them especially turkeys they will come and attack you so if you see a group of turkeys turn around walk the other way um same thing for bears um which also i didn't know until i was over there and i actually read this apparently 
don't don't be loud apparently the louder and bigger you are the more a bear will see you as a threat and will go for you um i think the advice that i saw was just stand still and just sort of don't make eye contact with them but i mean i oh, i would have loved to have seen a wild bear but anyway so we're going to muir woods um and we are on a strict time limit i think we had like 35 or 40 minutes something like that so me and my mum were like okay just let's just keep walking of course as soon as we get through the admission bit i'm there like oh my god i need the toilet i really need a wee so i found these toilets lo and behold they were locked apart from the disabled one and of course the man who went in in front of me yeah he parked his breakfast shall we say and uh it didn't smell good so uh, i <laughs> managed to make it back out <coughs> there are signs everywhere around the old woods and it just says please be quiet because if you're too loud any wildlife that is near is going to move and it will set up a new nest or a den or whatever further away and we kind of want to keep the wildlife around here so we were quiet but there are people that i don't know if it's that they didn't understand the rules or just didn't pay attention to them but there were people that were just letting their kids run wild and it really really annoyed me as you probably see on the video so got that on video um we went walking into a bit which is called the chapel and the chapel has these amazing sequoia trees that are just massive and oh god they are just stunning it's the only way i can describe them they are beautiful trees um and um what else did i find out oh they can uh re reproduce and make t identical copies of themselves they are amazing anyway anyway uh so we leave there and we get back on the bus and we head over to Sausalito. And now one thing I am kind of gutted that I didn't manage to get on camera, like, at all, is that actually when we were going along, um, I mean, you're going past the seafront and there's all these, um, like, planks of wood sticking up out the water. And um, our tour guide pointed them out and said, look, everyone who comes to San Francisco these days knows the song Dock of the Bay it's like one of the biggest songs in the world and um, everyone thinks it's about San Francisco it's actually not it's it was written and is meant for Sausalito where you're gonna be getting off and these posts that you're seeing over on the left they used to be the docks um, and obviously you know over time they've just been left to fall in and everything like that but that is actually where uh, Otis Redding came down he sat on that dock and wrote the song and that's why he says about you know he's watching the tide rolling away and the ships coming in and the boats going out and everything of San Francisco Bay because he was overlooking San Francisco he wasn't in it and I was like wow okay I never knew that so anyway we pull up and again so uh, uh, you know I've caught a little bit on video um, doing the explanation and stuff like that Sausalito is oh god it is just gorgeous the place is is filled with natural beauty um so we went into a couple of shops there i went into the toilets as well I don't know why i was weighing that much that day and um yeah we um we went into the shops and we actually bought a, a candle holder for my brother um because that's all he'd said that he wanted just something you know a candle holder that looked really good and we found him one that looked amazing so we're very happy for that for getting that for him anyway um apologies again if you hear it in the background but the ice cream van has just pulled up outside and i'm so tempted if i had the spare change i would so be going out but i don't um, so yeah in case she sets her little noise thing off then you can just be expecting that anyway um, <clears throat> yeah so we get back on the bus at Sausalito make our way over um, to the actual San Francisco docks I think it's dock 
oh god was it dot nine or something like that it's kind of one of the early numbers that's where you actually get the tour bus from um for the alcatraz tour now what isn't made clear on the websites is that uh many 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 different companies will say we can do an alcatraz tour and what some of them actually mean is that they will take you on a boat over to alcatraz they'll drive you around the island and then back to onto shore yeah they don't take you actually onto the island so you have to be very very careful there is only i think there's only one official tour company that's actually allowed to go and will let you off onto the island and that sort of thing so um, be careful when you're booking that's all i can say but we managed to get onto the official one and um yeah we kind of just made it in time actually um for going over on the on the boat and so the boat ride is about five minutes long or something like that you, you are going at some speed but the true scale of alcatraz doesn't hit you until the boat is docking and you look up and you are like wow this thing is huge the island itself isn't massive um but yeah so you get off the, the the boat and you have to go over for like an introduction speech type thing um i'm sorry the ice cream van is driving back down the road now no idea what's going on anyway uh yeah so uh you have this welcome speech and it's it's kind of things like look if if you aren't that good on your feet alcatraz island is kind of steep so we have this uh, train thing over here get on that but be aware it only goes to the top and then back down it won't stop halfway down for you or anything like that I mean my mum because I know like my mum quite often suffers with her hips and her knees and that sort of thing so um, I said right come on we'll just go and get on the bus so we get on this little train thing and we go all the way up to the top to the audio tour so the audio tour is you have like you have a uh, set of headphones on and what i can only really describe as like an mp3 player and you get told uh, go to such and such a sign or it'll say like go to the cell on the left and then you pause it go to the cell or wherever it's told you to go to and then press play again and the area that you go into um to actually queue up for the audio tour um is an, the old shower block um and i am kind of gutted that they didn't really tell us about that until further on in the tour and they say about how you know the prisoners when they arrived they were stripped naked showered and then walked to their cells naked um and yeah it was like humiliation it was part of the punishment um i assume the clothes were waiting for them in the cell i don't know but yeah anyway so you put your headphones on you go up and there's boards around the place that have got like faces of prisoners on um ex-guards that sort of thing and it is actually former prisoners and the prison guards that are telling you stories while you're over there and it is really really interesting you know because you're looking at them while you're hearing the voice and listening to their story and you, you're actually i don't know it's it's so hard to to comprehend but you're in alcatraz do you know what i mean so i mean this tour takes you all over the place and you get to see certain things like i can now hand on my heart say i have been in a um oh god what are they called the cells that they have when a prisoner's like been really bad um can't remember the name of them but anyway i've been in them cells they have no lights um and um 
you like i actually walked into the cell everyone else was just kind of watching um and the fellow on the audio tour and he says close your eyes that's all you had to look at while you were in here um you wouldn't be fed regular food you don't know if there's a toilet or anything like that and you could be kept in here for like three days before you get out to the exercise yard and that sort of thing um so yeah i've i've been into one of themselves i've been into the former library um which is quite interesting i've um seen the cells well i've seen one of the cells i think the other ones were further up i can't remember um the the great escape is from i've seen that um and that they've actually still got the hole in the back of the cell which i think is kind of cool um and it shows you this bit like sort of in between the backs of the cells and it explains you know look this is how they got out and these are actually service things and toilets and everything i don't know but it, it, it's amazing um go into another bit and it explains to you about um another riot that happened and it says like you know look at the walls and you'll see like little holes and those are where the um grenades were thrown and exploded and you know this is where they got the keys off the guard and this is where they did this and really really interesting and i actually didn't even know until it sort of like took me out of the building through the control room um into this courtyard type thing and they said if you have a look over to the left that used to be housing and there used to be kids living on alcatraz like whole families um the boats would come over in the morning pick the kids up take them to school and then take them back at night and everything like that like and you're like whoa the families used to live here it is it is incredible it really really is um and then yeah we we sort of we did the rest of the tour and um made our way down we had i think we had a little stop in some like little cinema type thing where there's like a national geographic documentary on and then we got one of the last boats back um and we sort of headed up towards little italy because we were like right we both need our tea we are up early tomorrow like really early so let's just go and get some food either take it back to the hotel room or eat in the restaurant whatever but we need to go back to the hotel then so we get on this little bus takes us up we get off at little italy and little italy is busy and i mean busy there's a really famous song that i grew up with called eat at joe's and you know it explains in the song about this place and i never thought it was real but it actually is and we walked past it and we went up this sort of like little hill type thing and um yeah that's when i heard so i'm just adjusting my headset that's when i heard the first siren of um well i heard the siren i didn't know what it was of um but let me see if i can get it for you um let me just see if i can play that this might this might be what oh it's not even going to play through the speakers oh no I don't know how well that is going to come across but that is what you hear um so we heard that and i was like oh mom there's drama happening so my mom was a bit like right and, and i'm like mom you're with a gay and there is drama we're going gonna go and see what this is and within my god within about five minutes 
less than that even there is like what six fire engines there's ambulances oh my god everything because someone rang up and said that they'd seen smoke now we went back down to where this eat at joe's restaurant is and uh the fire brigade were looking on top of that building and they didn't shut the restaurant they didn't evacuate it or anything and i'm thinking well come on if it is that building surely the safety procedure is evacuate it but no they didn't business carried on as normal basically it's kind of funny um and yeah so i got that a little bit on video and then we walked up and we tried to find somewhere to eat now obviously little italy is gonna be like you know pizza pasta all that sort of thing and we were like oh yeah yeah we we'll fancy some pizza you know american pizzas are huge and blah 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 everywhere was busy and i mean okay yeah it's saturday night you're in downtown san francisco they're going to be busy i appreciate that but some of these lines were ridiculous and we're walking around and the longer we're walking the more we're going oh do you know what i'd rather just go to bed hungry but we didn't uh i managed to take us up some little side street thing <laughs> i don't even know why and we stood outside some like bar that did like bar food and you could get some drinks and i think there was like a bit of music going on or something like that we was like well you know i kind of don't really you know don't know anyway this woman shouts over to us and she says if you're looking for food go in here it is amazing so we walk over and we're like okay and she's like yeah i i've just had the meatloaf i've never had anything like it it is incredible the food in here so we had a look and it's not a massive menu but the place is called eat at moe's so a little play there and i was like oh okay i get it and um yeah so we went in to eat at moe's and like as soon as you sit down the waitress is over gives you a glass of water hi how you doing you know can i get you a drink can i get you anything and you're like wow this is really nice and it's just it's just a casual restaurant so we're looking through the menu and my mum's like hmm you know I'll, i might try this and i was like right well i'm having the burger and the burgers are cooked on this like massive flame grill thing in the window oh my god right okay so you're not kept waiting that long for your food but it is all freshly cooked okay so i because I, I saw them that food i mean that burger that i had was probably I, I would go as far as saying that's the best burger I've ever had. It was just perfect. It wasn't overdone. You didn't have to rely on the sauce to give you flavour. It was, oh my God, it was just amazing. And I really can't recommend that place enough. So if you're ever in, in San Francisco, have a little look for a, a restaurant called Eat at Moe's not eat at joe's because that's expensive go to eat at moe's really good prices really good food take it from me anyway <clears throat> so we come back out and we walk our way through little italy again we stopped off and i videoed um a band that were playing on the side of the street which actually i was emailing the band the other week because i was drunk <laughs> i was drunk and i paused the video where i'm recording the band and they had this little banner up and i'm like oh i'm gonna find them off <laughs> so i had a little i did a little thing on facebook and i found them so i sent them a link to the video and i'm like look i'm just letting you know you're in the video i thought you were really good um you know and i, I hope that you all do well because you know you all added something different to the group and you're really good and they emailed back and they were like you know thank you very much it's support like you that keeps us going and that sort of thing and i was like oh i was made up anyway i made them feel a little bit better which um in turn made me feel a little bit better passing it on is contagious isn't that what contagious no, never mind anyway so <coughs> we um we carry on walking through and we get to the bus stop where we got off the bus and we waited and waited and waited and then my mum was like oh come on come on because like i need the toilet come on i'm like well 
what we can do mum is sort of if we go along here stick to pardon me stick to the bus route there will be a bus that will stop and we can just jump on that but at least we're making our way over to the bus uh, over to the hotel so, okay well honest to god and keep in mind we're walking up possibly one of the steepest hills in san francisco to get to our hotel so it took us about 20 minutes or something like that the last like hill bit was incredibly steep like it should have been a flight of stairs not a pavement like it, it was just incredible and um yeah we walked up there and <coughs> my mum ran into the hotel room i stayed outside and had a fag and uh, that was it for that day and night we um we saw loads we did loads certainly traveled loads and it was another day where we'd been on the go for like 15 hours or something like that like it had been a really long day and not one minute of it was regretted like really enjoyed it so we go back up to the hotel room uh i go and you know fill the ice bucket and we get everything ready for you know going to bed i, I always made sure the air conditioning was on because <laughs> i'm like look i haven't paid for any of this but i'm getting my money's worth um and yeah we went to bed and that was it for that day now keep in mind the next day we were let's see i think we actually got up i think it was uh 4 4 a.m we got up oh okay i can tell you this because this happened actually before we went to sleep so we're up in the room i'm like okay so we have to be at our meeting point tomorrow for 6 a.m so we're going to need to leave and you sort of like work your way backwards don't you like okay we need to leave about half five and then we need to do this and we need to do that so i said right okay why don't we get a breakfast to go because the waiter that we saw on the first day said you know you can get breakfast to go it's available anytime and blah, blah 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 and it can be brought up to your room or you can just come down here and collect it whatever so uh we rang up we actually rang up a few different numbers i rang up got three to the right person anyway and they said okay we'll put the order in um and i said you know can we have the breakfast going yeah sure what do you want so I gave off this list um which admittedly some of it was like well okay so i want pancakes waffles sausages bacon <laughs> like all the fatty stuff anyway we're just sort of nodding off to sleep you know safe in the knowledge that the breakfast has be done in the morning and then the phone rings wakes us both up and the woman's like yeah okay so I've, I've spoke with the kitchen and um yeah they're, they're not doing a cooked breakfast they will do a package so it's like a yogurt and um there'll be like a bit of fruit and cereal um coffee that sort of thing and we'll bring it up to your room i said oh no no there's no need to bring it up to the room we, you know we'll just pick it up from reception um because obviously we're coming down that way said, oh no no it's no trouble we'll bring it to your room what time do you want it so i'm like well um uh, 5 a.m she's like okay i'll make sure that's there so of course we get up in the morning and everything like that and that's where i'm going to stop the story ha 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 talk about leaving you on a cliffhanger um because the 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 next part of this is actually what generated our only complaint of the holiday so there you go um but i have rambled on enough it's been nearly an hour my god um but yeah thank you so much for listening um if you want to support the uh i can't believe oh no it's not it's what is it is this a blog is this a is this a podcast that's what i'm doing why do i keep forgetting the names of these things no idea anyway uh, if you want to support us please have a little look in the uh, video description there will be a link to the gift gaff page it is the phone network ran by you um please go and order yourself a sim card it will come to you with at least at least five pounds credit on it 
there are sometimes special offers on so sometimes you might get a little bit more credit that's why i say from but it will come with at least five pounds credit on and you can enjoy it and it's all for free but it helps to support this channel so please please order yourself a sim card thank you very much for listening and i will see you all well no i won't you'll hear me in the next podcast <laughs>